Welcome back everyone live here in theCUBE, Las Vegas for VMware Explore 2023. Our 13th year covering VMware's conference, formerly VMworld, now VMware's, I'm John Furrier, Rob Stretch here. Two great guests here, Eddie Janon, VP of Modern Apps and with VMware, and Ryan Morgan, VP of Software Engineering with, with Spring. Welcome to theCUBE. Yep, thank, thank you. Thanks you. for coming in. Thanks for having us. Okay, so we missed the Spring conference, which was the pre-event before VMware Explore, which because everyone's here, that went on, and then we had the great news you guys had with, with uh, Tanzu, app engine, platform, tying together with Aria, which is, I thought was probably one of the biggest things I liked that came together, that's going to have a lot of impact. So, a lot of news to cover. First, let's get into the Spring news. What did you guys do at the conference? Give us the quick highlights. Sure, uh, this is our first uh, in-person Spring mm -hmm. One for four years, so there was a lot of built up excitement about getting back together. Uh, this year we celebrated our 20th anniversary of Spring and our 10th anniversary of Spring Boot. So that's a huge milestone, uh, still growing at 50% year over year in terms of downloads. Uh, so it was great just to see the community and everyone together. Uh, as far as content, we talked a lot about what's coming in Spring Framework uh, 6.1 and Spring Boot 3.2, uh, mainly around uh, virtual threads, which is coming in Java 21, and then coordinated checkpoint at restore, which allows you to checkpoint an application and then restart it at a later time, which gives you benefits in terms of uh, startup time. So. so in today's market, obviously Java is still huge. You get a lot of other frameworks, a lot of language, and now with AI, all this yeah. coding is going to come natural. How do you guys see the spring vectoring into that AI wave coming? Because it's going to be pretty huge. You're going to have a lot of uh, assistance, a lot of intelligent yeah. assistance mm -hmm. you guys have it on the other side too. How's that blending in? Because these modern apps got to land somewhere, as Amanda Blevins would say, you know, they're going to come in, where do they drop? So right. apps got to drop somewhere. I know that's going to probably be our conversation, but how does the modern application view look? Yeah, you can think of it in a couple different ways. One is kind of AI for the end user, right? There's AI for the developer. So one of the things we focused on for this conference is a new project called Spring AI, which makes it very simple for Spring developers to interface with open AI models, right? So it gives you a variety of, of starters and templates and gets you going very, very quickly, so. And when you say open AI, do you mean the company open AI models or do you mean open source models? Uh, both open source models as well as uh, Azure AI. So we did okay. a demo on the keynote stage uh, on Azure kind of demonstrating this for a, a Spring application. And, and why is, why again, when you look at the whole portfolio, why is this so important? Because to me, I, I look at it and go, it, it makes sense, and again, you know, we were talking before, I developed on Spring as a platform, and that was back from 2006 to 2011, so a little bit while ago. Why is it important with the whole portfolio, with Tanzu and yeah. everything else? Yeah, no, that's a great question, and when we look at it, what we're doing with Tanzu, it's all about applications. You know, you heard Pernima kind of say the tagline over and over again, accelerating application delivery. And we do that working with a lot of enterprises, and we still, Spring is a hu hugely popular framework, especially also within the enterprises, and it has a high correlation with um, cloud native application development patterns, so for us, this is a very rich, vibrant community. Keeps growing. Um, there, he's he's continuing to innovate with the community on bringing like you know AI and these other capabilities to the framework and those tools. And th from a platform side, we're trying to bake that in into like Tons of Application Service, Tons of Application Platform, so that the everyday developer can take those uh, components, be able to build the apps quickly, and then get all the benefits of the su secure supply chains running on like um, those app spaces with yeah. the engine that are spring specific, and then be able to take that all the way through operating and optimization. Is the secure supply chain actually built in to, to that? Instant? Tap, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's a part of um, the application platform. Okay. I think maybe, um, maybe it's getting glossed over, but uh, yeah. core parts of the application platform are the developer portal, so that front end DevX, yep. which is where you'll see a lot of the spring application templates. The secure supply chain, you know, automated build, scan, sign, all that stuff, SBOMs, and then deploying it onto the runtime yeah, and managing. It, at, out of curiosity, just because the, the geek in me, is the, uh, the developer portal built off of Backstage? Or Absolutely. Something? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's all the hype, and yeah. we've been working with Backstage for like two plus years, so we've been involved in the ecosystem pretty for a long time. Because I think this is something, and I, I brought this up to a couple people, and I think we talked about it briefly, is that I think it's, almost also got glossed over is how much open source is part of this. Oh, 100%. And how important it is to this part, so. Uh, VMware has a ton of open source. Not only do we contribute to uh, all the big projects that you know, you've heard of, like Backstage, Kubernetes, all of that, we also author and open source a lot of technology. 
Spring is open source. Um, we sometimes donate those into the foundation. Sometimes we just continue to maintain them. And But what we do then is bring it together, integrate, add enterprise controls, all those other features that um, you know uh, enterprises are looking for, and then that's what we ship as product. And Oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. And in, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to butcher the name of it, Antera. Is that the service mesh? Oh, oh you're thinking Antria. Antria, Antria. yes. I knew I was Oh, yes. Um, and that's, that that's being, you're trying to bring that to the CNCF now, right? Is that? I believe so. I'm going to have to check. There's always okay. a lot of movement for us and yes. all the projects we're involved in. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing I want to ask about the, the news was one of the top news that got a lot of attention was the expanded um, platform, mm -hmm. Tanzu platform, but with the app engine. Can you uh, unpack that a little bit? What's the, what is that about? How does that fit in? Yeah, so um, we've expanded the definition of the platform because the platform is both the development platform side as well as the runtime. Like, you know, those two things need to go together. It's part of a life cycle. So that's really why we expanded it. It doesn't get rid of what we had before, you know, the portal, supply chains, or Kubernetes operations. But how do we, you know, abstract the complexity away from, away from Kubernetes more? You know, there's a lot of talk about that yeah. over Twitter. X, whatever now, <laughs> um, but that's really the idea of the engine, right? Can you codify business requirements um, and then also like the packages and all those things that you need for the app into a place yep. that then is going to continuously like orchestrate and keep maintain the state and all the things you need like security, um, I think need things to be highly available, but you can, doesn't matter what that underlying infrastructure yeah. is. So core to the VMware value proposition. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about the uh, simplicity, because one of the things we heard when we were coming in, we're like, Tansu is going to fit. Um, the feedback we've been hearing on the Cube and in the hallways is, it's simpler. It feels simpler. What was the, how would you describe that? If, if someone said, hey, what happened? What, how did you guys make it simpler? Simpler, well really, um, by doubling down on Tanzu being the application portfolio brand and our focus from an application context so that there is the application platform and then intelligence services, all in the um, pursuit of accelerating the delivery of those applications. And that way it's, it's, it just kind of provides like, here's two things you focus on and within there, there's core capabilities that, modules that you would add on. When we were talking to uh, Raghu when he came on, we were talking about how he had the wave slides, you know, we're all remember, seeing how old we are, the PC apps, web apps. <laughs> we all um, lived it, right? And I know. mobile apps, <laughs> and then he, he kind of skipped cloud apps. Like, he kind of skipped one. He goes, he interrupted me before I could say cloud apps. He goes, no, no, that's part of mobile. I go, okay, all right, okay, that's SaaS. Okay, I get that, on-premise focus. But the AI apps was the big part we focused on. That's going to be the app side and the modern apps, and that's what you're focused on. How do you guys see that 20 mile stair for modern apps as DevOps pushes platform engineering? We have been thinking it's going to be the big driver. How does the platform engineering trend and the movement with the AI apps come together? Right now we're in build out mode, everyone's you know, euphoric, oh AI everywhere. Uh, Hugging Face got a big fat financing round today. Everyone's playing with the models. So it's super fun at open source, but as it starts to get built. At a platform level, yeah. They got to land somewhere. So. Mm -hmm. How does that platform engineering tie into the apps that are going to drop in? Yeah, I think there's a couple ways to look at it. It's like, how can we take, um, and this is part of Regu's like keynote, like AI went from like this niche thing to now it's more generally available to everyone, it's accessible. But as, an organ as businesses start to bring that into their organization, how do they make that available to developers in a way that's easily consumable, it's also secure? I think the questions around like, what we have that we're answering with the software supply chain, we have to do that with the AI components and where's the data coming from, where's the models coming from? Can you prove the provenance of that? And that's really, I think, where the evolutions of the platforms will go because those, it's not, a, uh, it's not a something by itself. You're going to have the AI as part of the application and those all need to go through the same supply chain, have the same assurances to, so you can protect yourself as a business and your customers. And then they land on a platform that you have, we, you continue to have the flexibility to run that anywhere based on the business need where you're, you know, where you're serving your customers. And, and, and help, I guess, bring this and bridge the gap to spring. Because I, I think for me, that was, I mean, again, I've been there a long time ago. <laughs> My last company used .NET when we were moving to .NET Core. I, so I get some of that, that it's still heavily used, you know, Java and .NET are still out there yeah. all over the place. But a lot of people, it's you know, it's not seen as sexy, right? It's not the the, the it's not Rust or Go or yeah, some of these other. It's not, the other, it's not Node.js yeah. or some of these other things. Right. 
that help help bridge that gap for people who are watching of why Spring is still important and why Java is still important in .NET. Right. So. Uh, you know, Java as a platform has been moving faster than ever, right? So they've moved to a six-month release cycle, new features coming out every six months. Yeah. As a Spring team, we've decided that we are going to fast follow to be able to bring all the great innovations that you are seeing on the JVM you know, to developers. Um, you know, even if you just update a Java application from Java 8 to 17 and Spring Boot 2.7 to 3.0, you automatically get a bunch of performance benefits, right? then you can go a bit deeper and begin to take uh, advantage yeah. of some of these newer constructs that are coming in the platform, right? Yep. So, that's kind of how we see What's it. What's the view of the developers right now? Because, you know, we are looking at, always, always talking about the generative AI, oh yeah, yep. going to go faster. But everything seems to be circling back to like the old days, like systems programming. Everything we're talking about seems like operating systems. So, you know, Java is grounded as one of those, you know, heavy duty, you know, core, like C++, heavy, hardcore coding. Yeah. And so it seems like AI, we're coming back to these systems and old school constructs that have been working. So is that, is that translating into the developer community, Java, or am I just kind of like uh, overthinking this thing? I mean, there's just a, <laughs> there's just a breadth of, yeah. of support within Spring. We support 200 different technology starters, right? So no matter what it is you're trying to accomplish, there's likely something that we can do to help you move faster, right? Yeah. And then maybe going back to Betty's point earlier about you know, being able to enable AI and enable yeah. you know, Gen AI on the dev side, uh, doing work where, with code bases that are that are private, right? So you know, GitHub Copilot might be not really sure where the data is coming from. Uh, we're able to go back and train uh, a model based upon internal source code, right? So maybe you follow the conventions of whatever bank you're at or whatever company you're at, right? Uh, and by doing that, you can kind of ensure that safety and that providence of, of where that's yeah. coming from. Yeah, I mean, I think this large language model programming language, you can get that thing trained. You yeah. know, right? well, that's, who knows what it sounds like a dog, pets, pets yeah. and cattle, pets. <laughs> Gotta train pets, you can't yeah. train cattle. Yeah. Um, little cloud joke there, couldn't, I, couldn't I, resist. I actually just thought of something, and hopefully this maybe or maybe not have an opinion on it, but uh, when Oracle went and changed the licensing on the JDK, it, does that have any impact on your community or what you guys are putting out there? Or is that, how is that going with the yeah, Java uh, changes. We, we made a big change uh, in Spring Boot 3 to, to switch to the new uh, Jakarta EE namespace. Okay. Uh, that was a big, a big lift. Uh, it was really the pri one of the reasons why we also decided to, to push the baseline from Java 8 to Java 17. We felt that if you're going to go through the work of migrating from uh, the older namespace to the new one, you may as well go do the JVM upgrade as well. With the whole idea being that you could almost uh, you know, future-proof yourself the next decade or so, right? So. Great, great. My final question is, what's next? What's the business plan? What's the plan? What's the business plan on Tanzu? You're overseeing Tanzu and that platform. What's the plan for Spring? Take us out. Yeah, so I mean, you saw it. Develop, operate, optimize. So you will continue to see further integrations on the solutions on that the value that we have in those intelligence services, how can we shift some of that information left to make it more useful for the developer, right? Um, should I know how much this cost of my change is? Is that important to me, right? Everybody wants the information, because today everybody's in these silos. So you'll see further integration, as well as, um, you know, we're going to be bringing um, app spaces, an engine from like beta to GA throughout the rest of the year. Um, and then, you know, just continued enhancements. And especially with Spring, um, we're going to, you know, we already have a lot of capabilities for Spring baked in to the platforms, but Tanzu is a great place and should be the best place to land Spring first. And so that's that's a big focus area. So locking down Spring, so you're out. Not locking down, don't say that. Okay, bad word. <laughs> or <laughs> nailing, we know, you nailing, know. To the, <laughs> nailing to the wall. It's like, no, but getting apps landing yeah. on Tanzu from Spring first, like getting that done. Making it really easy, right? Really easy and a great experience for the developer. Right. Okay. And on, on the Spring side, it's you know keeping with that innovation within Java. And then as Betty said, you know, making uh, Tanzu a great place to run Spring. You know, the more we can take out of the platform or out of the developer's hands into the platform, it allows you to go faster and be more secure. And so success looks like more developers using the platform, dropping it into mm -hmm. Tanzu application engine with ARIA mm -hmm. management under the covers. Is that kind of the, that yeah, the goal? Yeah, I mean the more workloads that we can help get out to market faster, um, and the more that we can improve the right. cost performance and security of our workloads or other workloads, the better. Final, final question. What's the one thing you guys are taking away from VMware Explorer this year? 
Oh, it has been so vibrant. I mean, the energy here has been amazing. Uh, this was my first spring one, and it was like CD, like standing room only in a lot of these places. So that was really exciting to see. To see a truly vibrant like developer event inside of um, Explore was a good thing. Yeah, and I loved your tweets, by the way. It helped me figure out what was going on. So thanks for sharing all that content. Absolutely. We were definitely watching on, this, on the back channel there. What was the one thing, Ryan, you take away from VMware Explorer? I take away, you know, we were you know, moving to build a developer conference into a yeah. infrastructure conference. There was some concerns on how that might work. <laughs> uh, but I would say it's been great to expose Spring to so many new people. Yeah. Uh, and then just being able to see the community again for the first time in four years has been fantastic. All right, well thanks for coming on theCUBE. Third thanks, day, guys. we're going we're gonna to shut it down. I'm going to pull the plug in a few hours. <laughs> we got one hour left. Hey, thanks for coming. I know you're super busy. You guys are super busy. Appreciate it, everybody. always. Thank always, you. awesome. Yeah. Cube Live coverage, we're going to the very end. I'm John Furrier, Rob Stretch, Dave Vellante is on the other side with Lisa Martin. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break. Thank you.